For such a small village, Wentworth in South Yorkshire sure has a huge story. It's home to the first Prime Minister from Yorkshire, the UK's largest private residence, and has two churches. Weird for a village with only 1,500 people. We're here at the old Holy Trinity Church in Wentworth. Now, today it lies in partial ruins. Why? Well, the reason for that is twofold. Reason number one, a new church was built here in the 1800s, meaning this practically fell into disuse for worship once the new church had been built. But reason number two, it is so chuffing old. Some of it dates back to the 1200s, most of it was built in the 1400s, and some of it was rebuilt in the 1600s. Some of the materials for that were from the local Monk Breton Priory after the dissolution of the monasteries. We're here for a special look around the church today to find out more about its history and the family that built it. Since it hasn't been used as a place of worship for over a century, only three places remain intact, including the chancel and the North Chapel. Then, of course, there's one of the most recognisable places in any church, really. This is the tower, and it's made out of sandstone, and it's thought to date back to around 1491. The purpose of towers in churches was to try and direct people's guidance towards heaven, but it was also used as a place to store church bells and to make churches stand out from other surrounding buildings. In 1684, William Wentworth, the second Earl of Stratford, had this church renovated for the cost of £700, which in today's money equates to around £80,000. It blows my mind that one of the wealthiest and most powerful families in all of England resided here in this small, picturesque, quaint village of Wentworth in South Yorkshire. Also here in Wentworth is England's largest private residence, Wentworth Woodhouse. It was built by Thomas Watson Wentworth, who passed it down to his son, Charles Watson Wentworth, the first Prime Minister from Yorkshire, who died childless and passed it down to his nephew, the fourth Earl Fitzwilliam. The fourth Earl Fitzwilliam actually built a crypt for his family to be buried in, which is situated under the grounds here at the old Holy Trinity Church. The Fitzwilliam dynasty was also the family that was responsible for building the new Holy Trinity Church here at Wentworth. Before we move on there though, there's one more place we have to explore here, and that's the graveyard. Here, among the graves in the old churchyard, we can take a moment to reflect on just how many people relied on this church. Graves have been used by parish churches for centuries, with some speculating as far back as the 6th century. Traditionally, the dead were buried facing eastwards, as in Christianity, Christ is seen as the light of the world, and so the buried would face the new day, the new light. Graveyards tell us a lot of interesting stories about a lot of interesting people. Take this gentleman for example, John Dennis Blonde, or as he was actually called, Chao Quang Tsie. Chao came from China, and he came aboard the HMS Blonde, a frigate. The Earl gave him a job and a place to stay. He was fiercely Christian and was actually baptised at this very church. He died in 1850, aged only 17 years old. Because of his devotion to his faith and the people he worked with, he was given a proper, respectful burial right here. There was a famous local man buried here too, a certain William Cooper. The master carpenter of Wentworth, William Cooper, is also buried here at the church. He died in 1781 and gave instructions on the back of his gravestone on how to properly restore it should it be knocked over. For goodness sake, fix this stone up again! Not a minute's walk away, the second church, now called the New Holy Trinity Church, began construction in 1872. By 1876, it was completed and then consecrated, as in made sacred, in 1877 by the Archbishop of York. The most striking feature of this church is undoubtedly the spire. 
The sixth Earl Fitzwilliam is the man who had this church commissioned. Now, his lineage, the Watson Wentworths and the Fitzwilliams, were extravagant to say the least. They built the largest private residence in the UK, they built countless follies on their estates, and they housed parties that catered up to a thousand guests. I definitely think that's one word that could sum up that family tree. Extravagance. Everything that family tree built had to be extravagant, it had to stand out. That's why when the 6th Earl Fitzwilliam commissioned this church, he had to have a 200 foot spire built onto it. That's taller than the Arc de Triomphe, that's taller than Nelson's Column. It's one of the tallest church spires in all of South Yorkshire. And that's the purpose of this building. Its purpose was to stand out. And believe me, a 200 foot church spire definitely stands out. The outside of this church is of course magnificent, but the inside is beautiful too, and has a lot of impressive and very interesting features. Not only was this church built to demonstrate the wealth and the power of the family, it was also built as a memorial. This church was dedicated to the 5th Earl Fitzwilliam, Charles Wentworth Fitzwilliam, and his wife, Mary Dundas. It was paid for by the 6th Earl Fitzwilliam and cost him approximately £25,000, which in today's money equates to a staggering £1.5 million. Pounds. The Fitzwilliams of Wentworth were incredibly wealthy landowners who were also connected very well, I must say, with the local community. But they were also out to impress. Much like how Thomas Watson Wentworth only hired the best architects to build Wentworth Woodhouse, the 6th Earl Fitzwilliam only hired the best architects for this church. He enlisted the help of John Loughborough Pearson. Now, J.L. Pearson is regarded as one of the leading and most famous architects of Gothic revival style in the Victorian period. His very famous style of vaulting, which can be seen in the ceilings above us, used archways to cover open spaces. The 6th Earl Fitzwilliam was really not pulling any punches when it came to getting the best design he possibly could for this church. And that brings us on to the case of the organ. Now, organs originally built around 200 BC were not actually intended for church use. They actually crept into churches around 900 AD. Although there is a case of a certain Pope Saint Vitalian who used an organ to improve the singing of his choir in the 7th century. Nowadays, however, organs are synonymous with churches and are used in almost every part of life in churches where they need music, such as sacred ceremonies like weddings. This particular organ here, surprise, surprise, was of course built by one of the leading organ builders in the country. This organ was built by Henry Willis, who was also known as Father Willis. He lived from 1821 until 1901. He was regarded as the best organ builder in the entire Victorian period. His company, Willis & Sons, still exists to this date and even look after this organ. The organ, however, is not the only impressive interior design in this church. Moving on up here to the altar, we are greeted by one of the other beautiful features in an already stunning church. This stone sculpture, clearly depicting the Last Supper, was given as a gift to the 6th Earl Fitzwilliam by his children on the 50th wedding anniversary of the 6th Earl to his wife, Lady Frances Douglas, in 1888. And if you cast your eyes above it, you'll see one of the other beautiful stained glass windows, one of two that were also installed by the 6th Earl. The western one was installed by a very famous Victorian designer, Charles Kemp, who installed over 4,000 stained glass windows into churches throughout his career. 4,000! Very, very good at what he did. And this one, the eastern one, was installed by a firm known as Clayton and Bell. Now, Clayton and Bell was a very long-standing and very renowned firm. It lasted from 1855 all the way up until 1993. Again, a recurring theme here. All the designers of all these beautiful features were at the top of their game in the field. 
The Fitzwilliams, keen to show off their money and power, and because they had money and power, would only hire the best for the features of this church. And it really pays off because this is truly a stunning place to be. The sixth Earl Fitzwilliam may have felt compelled to build something because his predecessors had built so much in their lives, such as Wentworth Woodhouse and the nearby Follies. He may have also chosen a church specifically so he could replace the old one, but also so he could have a burial site for him and his family. Nowadays, like a lot of local churches across the UK, New Holy Trinity Church here at Wentworth plays a huge part in the local community. Not only for the services it holds, which attract many, but also for the art exhibitions and, thanks to the great acoustics in there, the concerts and classical music recordings it also plays host to. If you get the chance to visit Wentworth, I wholeheartedly recommend it. This is a truly fascinating little village with a big story. And it's not great just for the local churches, which are fantastic to see, but also for the other local history sites, such as Wentworth Woodhouse, the largest private home in the UK, and the follies that are scattered across the estate. Not many other villages in the UK can boast such a historic and close connection to the great families and stories that once lived here. Thank you.